Yeah, right. We planned it that way. That pew, that pew run helps. Pew run hurts. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of, of Mass and this 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As been our tradition throughout this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we have started the 1030 Mass every week with a prelude that sort of highlights um, some of the readings in the uh, uh, Gospel and Epistle. Today's readings focus on welcoming and invitation so our prelude today is Table of Plenty. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Who oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. sorrow and woe. My wine will flow like the sea of gladness, the flood, the depths of your soul. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Today's Mass is uh, broadcast and streamed with permission through our license, through one license, A728690. The new protocols for coming to Mass in church unfortunately do not allow for the congregation to sing, but if you'd like to hum, you're more than welcome to hum. So please rise and join in humming our opening hymn, All Are Welcome. Number 414, All Are Welcome, number 414. Hum along, please. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. Oh, a place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Build of hopes and dreams 
and pigeons, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome all of you who are physically present here today with us celebrating and for all those who will be joining us live. We begin this celebration as we begin all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And may the grace and peace of the Lord be with all of you, with your spirit. We've come to the house of the Lord. Let us prepare to meet him in word and in sacrament. Lord Jesus, you call us to die to self and sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us when we fall and repent. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us life through the blood of your cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. And together we pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of the light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shuman, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Our psalm response today is Psalm 89, Forever I Will Sing. Forever I will sing. 
chosen one, I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever. Then set up your throne through all ages forever. I will sing the of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Happy the people who acclaim such a God, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice the source of their bliss. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always. With him my covenant shall last. Forever I will sing the goodness of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
with you. Is your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one whom sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he's a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous person because he's a righteous person will receive a righteous person reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. With the COVID-19 quarantine, I have found myself looking at pictures of past vacations. I came across a trip that I took some years ago to Hawaii. As I was going through the pictures, I was reminded of that wonderful custom that the Hawaiians have of placing a flower lei around the people just like this one. This lay, when you come, remind, is a welcoming to people into their state. It's a tradition that comes from a long time ago. I can tell you firsthand, when I looked at those pictures, it reminded me of just how important I felt when I arrived at the hotel, and there were people, and there were music, and they had smiles on their faces, and they were singing, and they hung this fragrant lay of flowers around me. I felt so invited, so welcomed. I felt so important. I was amazed. This custom is over a thousand years old among the Hawaiians, because in the old days they would travel from one island to the other. And it was a long and a journey in canoes. And when they came to the other island, they were met. And sometimes they were fragrant flowers. Other times they were herbs and spices and other things. But it was to really make sure that that person felt welcomed. That they were special. That they were now a part of this family, this new island. This custom is not, of course, the first custom. These customs go back much further. There was a custom during Jesus' time called Shalim. Shalim was a custom that people were expected, expected to show upon the king's mess emissaries, his messengers. They were to treat the people who brought the message to them from the king just as though the king himself was there. It was expected 
to make that person feel like they were someone really important, even if the news wasn't good news. It was to make sure that they knew that they were welcome, that they were a part, that they were all one, that they all are VIPs. A couple weeks ago, this nation was challenged once again, once again to take a look at racism. It was challenged to once again say, how am I attributing to prejudices in this world? How am I excluding people in my life and in, our, in the life of the society? How am I pushing people away rather than making them feel special? And I worry. I worry because, yes, it was a good call for all of us to take a good look in our own lives and look at the prejudices that each and every one of us carry. The ways that we exclude people based on their color or their language or the country they come from or their religion, and the list goes on. But I worry because I feel that this might be one of those things just like so many other issues that we face. That, you know, we protest, we throw some money in, we start some new project. The politicians tell us, oh, we're going to change. And nothing happens. I mean, remember, after all those mass shootings that were taking place, protest and protest for uh, somehow some kind of gun control. And has any changed? Very little. And what about immigration? All the people who have made this country their home and all the protests we did, and yet even with the Supreme Court's decision on DACA, families are fearful of being separated, being fearful of being deported. And then, yes, once again, Black Lives Matter. Do we treat each other as equals? Do we welcome each other as VIPs? You know, a couple weeks ago in my homily, I challenged each of us to look at our own racism, our own prejudices in our lives. But that's not enough. Our gospel so wonderfully puts it for us today that whoever, Jesus says, excuse me, whoever, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives the one who sent me. That was the very instruction that Jesus gave to his disciples, that we are, like the end of today's gospel, are to welcome one another, to give a glass of water even to the merest children, as it, because they're disciples of God, because they're children of God. To treat even people that we don't know as though they were the king himself. God. But it's not enough to, to look at our own failings and faults. We have to do something about it. So I challenge you. I challenge you this week to do one thing that's reaching out to someone you don't know. Someone maybe that you have excluded in your life. Maybe someone that you haven't treated as though they are a VIP in your life. Do one little thing for them. Somehow make them know like a flower, a lay of flowers can make someone feel so welcomed and greeted and included. What something simple you can do. We're not in Hawaii. We're right here in Chicago. And we can do something about it. It may be the littlest thing, but that's my challenge to you. Because when you do to least my children, you do unto me. He who receives me receives the king. Please stand, and together let us profess our faith in the God in whom we love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. 
God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for all our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is faith, faithful high priest who knows our weaknesses. We approach him now with confidence as we bring our prayers and our needs before him. that all Christian believers die to sin and live for God in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That elected officials serve all people, protecting the rights of the poor and disenfranchised. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who head households especially single parents, find the spiritual nourishment and strength they need to meet each day with hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we recognize our obligation to work for the greater good, learning new ways of listening to each other with open minds and open hearts, even when it is difficult. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have suffered a loss of a loved one through COVID-19 lean on their faith for comfort in their time of bereavement, finding strength in the loving presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that as we celebrate the founding of our nation, we acknowledge the sins of the past that can separate us, allowing that recognition to act as a gateway to a recommitment to the vision of equity, justice, and peace for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Dennis Buss and Mackay James, and for the intentions of this Mass, the parishioners of St. Gertrude, Gina Delila and Joyce Weaver Gammon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you call us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Help us by your grace to take up our cross and follow you every day of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Now We Remain. Once we were 
people afraid, lost in the night. Then by your cross we were saved, dead became living, life from your I just wanted to announce that because of the COVID-19 protocols, there is no offertory collection taken up during the mass. There are offering, you please, your offering boxes are at the doors of the church, they're black boxes, and you may place your donation uh, there. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father the Almighty. May the Lord accept, accept the, the sacrifice, sacrifice in your hands. hands. For the, the praise and glory, glory of in God's name. name, for our good, good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplishes the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And, lift them up to the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and arranged the changings of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world and all of its wonders, to rule in your name over all that you have made, and forever to praise you in your mighty works, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And and so we join with the angels as we pray and sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church bread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blades, our Bishop, with all our religious, the clergy, and your entire people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Gertrude, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand, and together we pray in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, and wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity through the kingdom, we live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with all of you. Let's share some way of sign or symbol to each other of peace. seated. There's a couple announcements on the procedure for receiving communion. We ask that you please wait in place until the usher comes to your pew, then follow the usher's instruction for approaching the altar for communion. The usher will spray your hand with sanitizer. Please work the sanitizer into your hands until it dries. Do not touch your face, clothing, or any other surface after sanitizing your hands. Please receive communion from the priest or the minister on the same side of the church as you were sitting. As you approach the priest or minister, 
after you've sanitized your hands, receive the host in your hand only. Step six feet to the side, remove your mask from one side face and let it hang from your ear and uncovering your mouth and consume the host. Then replace your mask over your mouth and return to your seat. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Take and Eat. Fuck you, no. 
know the shepherd's voice. You are my own, your ransom is my pride. Take and teach, take and teach. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink, this is my blood given up for you. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit to the last forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the announcements, I didn't have a lot of time to shop for this because I just found out, but someone here is celebrating a very special birthday, Marilyn Klein. And so, Marilyn, I'm going to give you this lay as a sign of, for all of us, you are VIP in our lives here at St. Gertrude. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marilyn. Happy birthday to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming to church this weekend. It's great to have you back. We are still in need of volunteers, especially for the greeter and the cleanup ministries. There are sign-up clipboards on the tables in the back of church. Training for these new ministries is available immediately after Mass today. Please meet the trainers in the back of church right after Mass. Even if you can't stay for training today, please consider signing up, and the team captains will be in touch during the week. Thanks, everybody. Also, at the end of Mass, we've asked that you please wait in your pew until the usher releases you from your pew, then proceed to the side door here, the exit, uh, please do not gather in the back of the church or in the vestibule or in front of the stairs of the church itself. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go and bring the peace of Christ to this world. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Blessed Be the Lord. 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 The God of mercy. The God of mercy. I shall not fear. I shall not fear. The dark of night. of all my foes, he will protect me from your wicked hand. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice, to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord. 